So a couple weeks back we saw the release of Fortnite on the Nintendo Switch. While the game received strong praise from the gaming press, the headlines were somehow stolen by some of the problems faced by PlayStation owners trying to log into their Fortnite account and being shown this message. You see, Sony have made it quite clear that they have zero interest in crossplay, and while that in itself hasn't won them many plaudits, it was revealed that they won't even allow their players to use their account on another platform, and this only added fuel to the flames. Argument has been rife in the weeks that followed the launch, and PlayStation have since announced that they have no intention of changing their minds anytime soon. Microsoft and Nintendo have been milking the goodwill from this scenario ad nauseum. So inexplicably, a late Nintendo port somehow became the biggest PR nightmare of 2018 for the PS4. Now before we drill into the commentary on this, let's get a few things straight. No, I'm not a fucking fanboy, for any console. I've owned consoles from all three of the big players and I don't hold any allegiance to any of them. We're talking about faceless mega corporations here, they don't need nor care if you fight their corner on the comment sections of YouTube. So, Pony Slayer 360 and Xboner69, comment if it makes you feel better, but you'll probably just be ignored. We're talking about what I consider business sense and what consumers want to see. On that subject, what's been the biggest argument for the foot soldiers of the console wars? Well, the phrase pro-consumer has been bandied around a lot, and despite the spirited argument either way, there is a simple outcome for this discussion. Yes, this is without a doubt anti-consumer. Sony are actively inconveniencing their own player base and are offering a definitively inferior version of the crossplay games in the process. This, by its very nature, is anti-consumer. Not being able to play against friends on other consoles is one thing, but totally undermining their progress in a game for the crime of using another platform is a much bigger kick in the teeth. The most ludicrous thing is that Sony had a very strong E3 up until this point and showed off a plethora of interesting exclusives still to come this gen. But on a day where they had no announcements or reveals, they suddenly became the villains of the piece. What's more, they have managed to disillusion a wide selection of players in this move. The Nintendo Switch has proved to be something of a revival for the company, after the woeful sales of the Wii U, and the numbers of players directly affected by the cross-play block would not be insignificant. So to summarise, Sony have managed to earn the disdain of people who wanted to play the biggest game of the moment, on the fastest growing console of the moment, during the biggest event on the gaming calendar. And yet people still suggest this isn't much of a big deal. The only argument in Sony's favour during this debacle is the following. Sony are leading the race this gen, why should they follow the chasing pack if it'll only cost them? Okay, so this is where I get the logic. The PS4 has won this generation. It just has. Microsoft fell from a position of some strength to second fiddle in almost every metric. Console sales are fewer, and the Xbox One's exclusives pale when compared to the PS4's offerings. In fact, while Microsoft's E3 appeared strong with the acquisition and establishment of five new in-house studios, the lack of a brand new IP suggests that this is a plan set in motion for next-gen, with rumours circulating of two next-gen consoles in development at Microsoft. So if Xbox are consolidating for next gen, why should PlayStation have to keep on the front foot and allow crossplay when all this may do is increase player bases for Xbox players? Well, firstly, success in one gen doesn't guarantee victory in the next. Sony should be well aware of that, with the Xbox 360 stealing a march in the West immediately after the PS2's dominance in the gen prior. Clearly an obvious effect of this controversy is that players may harbour bitter memories of these events and take that into account when picking their platform. But realistically, I think the biggest issue here is that Sony are missing a glorious opportunity to bury their fiercest rivals. I've already mentioned how Nintendo and Microsoft have taken every opportunity to smarm over Sony's lack of crossplay, joining marketing forces to heap misery upon the market leader. The reason for this is obvious, certainly where Microsoft is concerned. This is the greatest hold they have over Sony right now. If Sony allow crossplay, the rivals have one fewer selling point. The comparisons then go back to the other factors, like hardware, which there's a minimal difference between at the moment, and exclusives, where... Hmm... So right now, Sony have the exclusives, the sales, and the only home console with VR functionality. If they were to give gamers a chance to play across all platforms, Microsoft would have one hell of a job to do to claw back some market share. If, as a neutral console gamer, 
you saw the track record of this gen, you would seriously have very little reason to believe Microsoft are going to offer anything better next gen. But the crossplay angle is surely still a factor that will tie into one's buying decisions. Your casual gaming audience typically only go for the very big releases in a year. Your GTAs, FIFAs and Call of Duties. And with that in mind, they'll intend to play against their friends. If their friends already own one console, they're likely to follow suit. However, with universal crossplay, the decision's irrelevant, and then they may only choose to look at the wider factors like the aforementioned exclusives. Let's take a second to look at potential downsides to crossplay for Sony. And there is an argument to be had that giving Xbox and Nintendo access to PlayStation's player base will massively increase player numbers on other consoles, and in doing so, increase their appeal. Naturally, the last thing you want to do as a company is knowingly increase the appeal, and therefore the competitiveness, of your rivals. But as I've already mentioned, you will be eliminating the one real competitive advantage they have. But what about the cost and time involved in allowing crossplay? Well, while I can't speak for the logistics of translating community guidelines between other companies, the process of combining servers is far from a difficult undertaking. Talking to Polygon, Sionic stated that Universal servers would be up and running in less than an hour all over the world. That's not to mention when Fortnite did have PS4 crossplay enabled, if only for a few minutes. It's clear, therefore, that the only cost at play here would be the opportunity cost, which as we already discussed may be insignificant. Not responding or even acting upon this debacle in a meaningful way is a real own goal as far as I'm concerned, and people seem to be misunderstanding the purpose of a market leader. Market leaders don't ignore the competition, they lead them. They give away no openings for the chasing pack, and offer the best product on the market. Sony will be well aware of the media fallout they've suffered due to their crossplay decisions, and if they want to continue their success forward into next gen, they should really consider listening to the anger. For me then, Sony's crossplay stance is one of complacence, and if they want to remain market leader, they need to start leading. Okay, so that's my take on PlayStation's crossplay debacle. I'd be quite interested to hear your own opinions down in the comments. If you like what you've seen and want to see more of it, please like and subscribe, it really helps me out. And as always, thanks for watching, hope to see you in the next one.